Like, you're not gonna look at that and be like, wow, canning's so romantic. You're gonna think like, wow, canned meat. Good morning, everybody. Ella, say good morning. Hi. You're drinking what? Fire. So as you know, last night, we were not able to get all of the canning done, but we did get some things done and that was productive. The gluten-free cinnamon rolls were not so good. But right now, what we're gonna do is get ready to can some chicken wings. I know that sounds gross, but they taste really good. But before we're able to start canning, I need to clean dishes. Because we need to wash this big canning thing, which is heavy. And Callie kind of left a mess after she baked all of those cinnamon rolls. All right, so Kelly is here, and she's gonna help us do all this. Hey, how do you feel? Yeah, I think we're in that third trimester, so I think I'm getting to that point where it's like nine o'clock at night, I'm ready to sleep. But honestly, I just can't complain. Like, I'm not super sick, I'm not really tired during the day, but I also take naps and sleep in and go to bed early, so maybe I am tired. <laughs> and I just, I just get to sleep. But I think I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. I think we're, you know, excited for this person to come. So that kind of helps you drive that energy. And we still have three kids to take care of. So it's not like there's any slow in the train. But I'm good. Let's can. So we've got chicken legs. And then I think these are just wings. And I'm going to do them in two different jars. Because after we've done a few different, like, chicken parts in jars, we realize some jars are better for others. So I like the small mouth or the narrow mouth lid um, for the wings because they're smaller and they're easy to get out. But when I've put the legs in the same jar, it's kind of like, I don't know, like a jigsaw puzzle trying to get different pieces out at the end of it because once we pressure cook them, the, the meat is so tender that it really just falls right off the bone. So if you're trying to take it out um, a few months later when you're ready to eat it, it kind of gets messy. So I just prefer this. If you have a method you like better, go for it. So really all you're doing is dropping them in. Make sure your jars are cleaned. You can run them through the uh, dishwasher just to sanitize them. But seriously, I'm just dropping them in. If you're fortunate enough and you can go to a farmer's market or you have enough chickens of your own, you can take the pieces of that fresh homegrown farm backyard chicken and just put them right in here just like this. Um, or if you are looking for, like we have a local meat market that we really like, I think Costco carries these as well. So you have a lot of options just to get pieces, but I recommend obviously getting an organic, fresh local chicken if you can, and then using the parts like that. Canning meats is not an attractive look. Like you're not gonna look at that and be like, wow, canning's so romantic. You're gonna think like, wow, canned meat. No, um, it's gonna come out looking like it should be stored in Buffalo Bill's Silence of the Lamb yeah. van. It's super creepy. It's, but it's tell gross. them why we even ever first canned meat in the first place. We wanted to have some food stored and we didn't wanna rely on our our refrigerator and our freezer because we had a really small before we had a really small freezer um, and we wanted to learn that skill like we did some hot can like some some water bath canning not really pressure canning then our small refrigerator went out we just gotten back from a trip and we just went to the grocery store so we restocked everything we had like I think we had two whole chickens in the freezer. We had chicken wings and thighs. We had ground beef, like all these things in the freezer. They were like, oh yeah, we're, we're good to go. We've got meals. Then the freezer died and we were like, holy crap, how are we gonna cook it and eat it all? So we tried this canning thing and it was super intimidating because I thought, oh no, if you can meat wrong, you're dying. You're gonna poison yourself. So I read a lot about it. Pretty much you can can any kinds of meat. Like we browned the, the ground beef beforehand. So maybe you could do it with ground sausage as well. Um, the only limits that I saw in canning meat was, or canning I think in general, when you're doing a pressure canner, 
was um, like soups. So we couldn't do purees. Like if we wanted to do a soup, it needed to be maybe a vegetable with a broth base and nothing dairy in it. When it comes to preserving your food, this is honestly so much faster. I, I know it takes a little bit of time to put them in jars and, and get them ready this way, but a lot of people do this, uh, especially people who prep, they do this when meats are on sale. So if they find a really good price on meat, they don't back up their freezer with me if they're gonna eat it throughout the year with their family. This can stay, I've done it for nine months just cause when I get to that 12 month mark, it makes me a little nervous. Put the labels on and date them once they're out and cooled. So it's really simple to just kind of use this, pull it out of the pantry and then you've got uh, you've got your meal like halfway already prepared by then, which is pretty awesome. And so what we like a lot about, it just tastes better for us. I mean, for me it does. Whenever it's you- It's not chewy. Yeah. There's no like undercooking yeah. to it. It's we, just good. We don't eat chicken wings a lot. Yeah. I know that whenever we're on the property, we're gonna probably not ever eat chicken wings. Yeah. We're probably just, we typically just do whole chickens. Mm -hmm. um, which is just, I mean, it's just better for, for everything. This is something that we learned and we just like, oh, we like it. It's nice to have. So yeah. when you're thinking like convenient food, if we can grab this from the pantry instead of running out to Chick-fil-A, that's way, way, way better. Yeah. And you'll just notice that the meat just falls off the bone. Mm -hmm. So you don't have all that the it's chewy. Tender. Oh yeah. It's not dry. The bones are, are a little bit brittle. Yeah. So you just And they're soft though. Yeah. So, so you, they're soft and they're brittle. You yeah. might take a bite of the bones if you yeah. don't know where the bones are. It's it's a breeze. You just you just yeah. like take the you just swipe it and the you meat don't have falls to make off. that noise. <laughs> Speaking of canning the meat, then you need to take a clean rag or paper towel and you have to wipe off the tops of it. This is so important because if any seasoning is in there, it's gonna interrupt the seal and you really have to have a good seal, especially when you're canning pressure canner. This might be dinner for us. <laughs> no, we are not. With the time it takes to can, we are not eating it for at least a week. And I will add before we start, we're not experts on canning. We've done it um, probably, you know, maybe a dozen times. Yeah. So let us know in the comments down below what what we're missing, what you like to can, some of your favorite recipes. Ask uh, your questions. Yeah. Like why did we do something this way? And I oh. don't know, maybe we're doing it the wrong way. Okay, so now there's been a steady steam for 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the weight on. Okay, so we have about 46 minutes left on the canning over here. But in the meantime, so I've been texting with Pete, so this is super cool. Um, I think what we're gonna be able to do, just cause we're doing things, you know, um, no debt, wanting to save funds, talking with Pete, our permaculture designer, put his link down below, Drought Proof Texas, that's droughtprooftx.com. I think what we're probably gonna do is go out to our property here soon in the next couple of weeks and survey the lines for the front swales. Uh, that's just something that will be really good to be able to get that done before spring and then And then uh, we can go ahead and we can just survey the lines. And then whenever the funds come up, we'll be able to get the excavator out there and start doing some excavation and digging those swells. You guys are gonna love it. It's gonna be just the coolest thing to see Pete do this. Oh uh, man, I can't wait. And then I forgot, I'm, I'm also texting with a guy to learn about sea balls. So while, I'm pressure canning, I'm staying busy, and getting some cool future videos going for you guys. Don't touch this thing. It's gonna be hot, and there's still pressure in there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wait until the pressure gauge is all the way down to zero. Turn the heat off and wait.
see something? Oh, shoot. What? That's one that cracked. Oh, no. Well, that was kind of gross. Even whenever you do everything right, sometimes something goes wrong. It's kind of gross. You really want to... You know what? Never mind. I'm not going to put that on camera. That's a little too gross. This is our first time to ever have a jar break in the canner. So, nothing's bad. It's not... It's not unsafe, but it did crack. And we're not gonna eat it, cause it's just nasty. And then depending on how long you let them sit in the canner, they might have popped. The, the little lids things, the suction, and popped it in there. So that is carrot juice. Uh, I found out about Garrett Juice from Jack Spierko of the Survival Podcast. I've had good results from it. Of course, we messed up and we had a freeze in Houston. I wasn't expecting that, so they don't look very good. But hey, I want to share this with you. You guys that know a lot more than this than we do, this is our first time to grow cauliflower. What do you think? You think it's ready? So it's, it's maybe it's bigger than my fist. The purple one's a little bit smaller. It's maybe that big. Uh, but the purple one's definitely smaller. Um, and it's still alive because we definitely got some new growth coming through. If you have experience growing this cauliflower, any kind of cauliflower, let us know. Do you think it's ready? Should we let it go? Can it get bigger? What do you think? How long do we wait? When do we harvest it? And our cardboard from yesterday is ready to go. So I'll probably put that in here soon. Okay, so that wraps up our canning video. You were able to see some successes and some failures. <laughs> so, as usual. yes, as usual with Better Together Life, uh, you're gonna learn how not to do things. Let us know what we did wrong. If you've had um, jars that have broken, let us know in the comments. Hey, if you've not ever had any mason jar, break on you canning jar let me know like if you've been doing this for years and that we're doing something wrong please let us know because we we don't understand they're kind of breaking um they're even breaking whenever we put water in them um so not sure what's going on with that uh, they're just the regular ball canning jars so anyway let us know oh yeah we're almost at 5,000 subscribers so please subscribe share the videos give us a thumbs up we'll see you tomorrow